So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology. And in this episode, we're gonna take a look at the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And if this is a phone you should consider in 2022, the later part, we're at the later part of this year. Do you believe it? We're already going into 2023 with the iPhone 14 Pro Max on the market. Is this one worth it? Now, the price point of this, you can cop one of these on eBay. You can cop one of these used for right around a $600, $700 price point. Let's go ahead and confirm that for you right here. You can see people getting rid of these things around 640, you know, 750, we're getting a higher storage capacity. You know the drill. You can definitely get it cheaper if you find it used. Now, let's just talk about the body and the build really quickly here. This phone is giving you a body that is very reminiscent of the iPhone 13 Pro Max and 14 Pro Max sans the thicker cameras. These are a little bit thinner right here, but you are still rocking that stainless steel on the edges. It's actually a little bit thinner than the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and you're still getting your edge to edge kind of feel, your squared industrial design. Late 2022, this thing still feels as premium and maybe even more premium than the iPhone 14 Plus. That's why it's on the table because these phones are pretty similar. They do have different notches. The iPhone 12 Pro Max's notch is a little wider, but it's a little bit deeper on the iPhone 14 Plus. So yes, I would say overall in terms of the body, the build, IP68 dust and water resistance, this thing still feels all the premium you would need right now. Keep in mind at that price point, you are looking at a phone like the iPhone 14. So if you are looking to get an iPhone 14, you're gonna pay $7.99. This is actually more than this right now. And you get a bigger screen, bigger battery, triple camera. You take your pick. By the way, this is the silver model. You can get this in graphite, gold, and Pacific blue, which is like a darker blue. It's not the Sierra blue of last year. It's not a baby blue. It's a little bit of a deeper navy-like blue. It's a definite go when it comes to just the overall premium fill that this body does still employ. So in the area of display, we are looking at 6.7 inch Super Retina XDR. It does get very bright and that's around 800 nits. That's the same nits you're gonna get on the iPhone 14 Plus. So expect it to be very bright. Also outdoors, you can hit 14 or actually 1200 nits outdoors. This also doesn't have 3D touch, but it does have dark mode, night shift, and true tone. In addition to that, if you go over here, you'll see very good color, very rich contrast in deep blacks. This was OLED, so very good there. Now the notch still can get in the way of content a little bit, but I think overall it's not super in the way. It kind of fades into the background a little bit. And then the text is also quite sharp as well. So you're gonna get a very high pixels per inch on here as well. So I will say you're gonna be pretty happy with the overall display. It's just got everything you need in terms of a screen. Yes, they have come out with this phone, but they're basically recycling this display right here with the 14 plus. So yeah, no 120 Hertz, no promotion, but at this price point, you know, you're getting this thing around 600 and you're getting the same size display as somebody with an iPhone 14 Pro Max, hey, I'll take a few little, you know, minor differences and save myself six or $700. Still an awesome panel with thin bezels, arguably an annoying notch, but overall still solid. Now in terms of software, I will say it's still worth it as well. And the reason being is because it has iOS 16, just like the iPhone 14 Pro Max. But the real deal here for me is that it has an A14 chip with this software, which means that you will get quite a few more updates for this phone. So if you're buying this iPhone, it's not out of date and it won't be for a couple years to come. Actually, it'll probably be more like three or four years to come. So that's what's awesome and I love about, you know, recommending this right now is you're getting 90% of what somebody buying a brand new 14 Pro Max is getting, but you're also getting several years of software support. So yeah, it's a definite go when it comes to the software. What about performance? Well, you might be asking yourself, does it perform well by comparison to the newer iPhones? And the answer is absolutely. Is it gonna be able to run every game on the App Store? And the answer is absolutely. Is it gonna do as fast as the A15? Not quite, but is it gonna matter? No. So yeah, go get it. If it comes, it comes to performance, you're asking yourself the question, Nick, is this thing fast enough? 
Um, yeah, it's fast enough. Look, apps aren't even developed as well for the newer 14 plus. You can see Apple A14 Bionics clocked in at 2.99 gigahertz. They did clock the A15 a little bit faster, but they do have six gigabytes of RAM. Yes, performance all day, every day, still very good. It's almost like I'm buying the same iPhone every year when it comes to performance. I really don't see the big deal here. They, these phones open applications at the same time. They open stuff at the, I'm just buying looks. I'm buying different cameras, performance. You see this? Thumbs up. It's a it's a go. The storage on this phone tops out at 512. So you're not going to get the highest storage capacity in the world. But keep in mind, you are going to get one up to 512 gig. And it's going to be cheaper than this guy right here, 14 plus, or maybe even the iPhone 14. So storage right now, good value on this phone. It's also NVMe storage, so it's very fast. You can airdrop with your Apple products. I had the 256 gig, it was enough for me. And they did bring one terabyte to the iPhone 13 Pro Max models, although they top out with 512 on the Plus models this year as well. 512 is gonna be your max storage capacity here. Cameras on this phone, triple 12 megapixel variety. Now, when you go ahead and take a photo here, and then you grab, let's say the new 14 plus in the store, you take a photo, the average person's gonna say, um, Apple, what's the difference? And they're gonna tell you, well, it has this megapixel and this cinematic and I don't see it. Look it, at the end of the day, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is the better phone these days with the camera. But here you have 2.5X, 12X zoom. You can go ultra wide. You have great video performance. 4K 60 HDR video on here. No cinematic, which 99% of people don't use. And then on the front, you do have, let me flip this thing around. What's up, peace. We do have a 12 megapixel on the front. So overall, it's a solid front facing video as well. And I just gotta say, I can gladly recommend this right now. Okay, the next thing I wanna cover is battery life. 100% capacity, you wanna look for a higher capacity. I would say above 95%, if doable, that would be pretty good. You're looking at a used phone, they're not all gonna be at the top of the game. You might have to get a battery replacement, but how does it perform? Nowhere near as good as the 13 Pro Max, it, about an hour less, but this phone was still able to make it through a full day of heavy use. So if you're trying to get to, let's say, the end of the day, some GPS use with some camera use, out of all the 12 series, this was the one that could do it. This was the only one, actually. My 12 Pro was not doing great. My 12 was not making it the day. This one was. So 12 series wasn't the best in general battery, but this was the one to get if you wanted good battery in this year. Apple went to town on the 13s with the battery, and they continue it pretty good with the 14 models. But this one, eh, it's okay. But it makes it through the day, and it's not going to be a deciding factor. It's not going to be like, don't get it because the battery is horrible. Nah, it's pretty good. When it comes to the reception on this phone, it's also very good. They finally put Qualcomm modems here, and we finally got 5G. So phone call quality for iPhone 12 Pro Max is very good. Also, reception strength is very good. Unlike the iPhone XR and the iPhone 11 Pro Max, 11 Pro, those weren't the best in the world. These is when it started really getting good. I used to always say that Samsung was so much better. Nowadays, I'm happy to recommend this. So if you're looking for that and you're looking for a physical SIM card slot, you can still get it here with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Is there any real cons to buying this phone? Nick, you've been praising this phone throughout the video. Stop being so nice, my guy. I'm gonna tell you a few. Buy this phone now, your resale value is gonna tank as time goes on. You're not gonna get much more money back for it. As time goes on, it's getting less and less. That's a major con of buying a used iPhone. The next one is that if you're looking for 120 hertz, you know, this thing is just not as smooth as some Android phones that are cheaper than this. You can get a smoother panel in terms of refresh for a lot cheaper than this right here. Also, if you're looking for 8K video, not gonna find it here. And if you want the more modern dynamic island, you know, you don't want this thicker, longer notch like this, this is not gonna be for you. 
Other than that, everything is still pretty good. This is not really very different from 2022. So yeah, it's a go for me. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section of this video. You found it helpful, entertaining, informing. Do me a favor, click that like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know which phone you want to see. One of the older phones. I, I'm kind of interested in checking out the older phones as we head into the new year to see if those are still worth it. I might even switch to them. So let me know which one you want to see going forward. I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well. And I got many more videos coming your way. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.